So let's apply Bernoulli's equation to a simple example. This is a very simple example. I'm going to do some more complex examples in subsequent videos. And we're going to talk a lot about the application of Bernoulli's equation to the measurement of flow. And you'll see that in the lab as well. So the example here is water at 20 degrees C in a large diameter tank discharges through a small pipe. And you can see the pipe in the side of the tank here. The height of the tank is 5.2 meters. The discharge pipe is located 1.3 meters from the bottom of the tank. The discharge pipe has an inside diameter of 2.5 centimeters. I'm draw it right here. And the tank drains slowly such that the flow can be approximated as steady and frictionless. So we can use Bernoulli's equation. And the problem is to calculate the flow rate, the discharge flow rate from the tank in liters per second. Okay, you always start any Bernoulli analysis by drawing a hypothetical streamline. It doesn't have to be perfect, but for example, I could imagine a particle of fluid being drawn down from the surface and then eventually discharging from the nozzle. So start by drawing a streamline. That's always, that's important. So point one here is at the free surface and point two is at the discharge from the pipe, right at the very discharge. Now point one and two are somewhat arbitrary. You can use other points. We'll talk about this in future examples. So other points are possible, but as you'll see, these are this is a pretty smart choice that makes the analysis easy. So now we're going to apply Bernoulli's equation between points one and two. So we've got the kinetic energy at one, the pressure energy at one, the potential energy at one, all per unit mass, of course, the equals the kinetic energy at 2, the pressure energy at 2, and the potential energy at 2, all per unit mass. So let's start evaluating some of these terms. So you can recall from a previous discussion, I think it was the previous video, that where a flow discharges to atmosphere, so at point 2 here, where the flow discharges to atmosphere, it's reasonable to assume that the pressure at that point is equal to atmospheric pressure. Unless the fluid is supersonic, uh, there are some other caveats, but for most engineering applications, it's perfectly acceptable to assume that the pressure at two is equal to atmospheric pressure. And of course, the pressure at one up here is also equal to atmospheric pressure. Now, of course, there's a slight change in pressure from one to two in the air, but we're going to neglect that. Remember back to chapter two, the density of air is a thousand times less than the density of water. So we, we assume that atmospheric pressure doesn't change significantly over this distance, which is a matter of a couple of meters. So P1 equals P2 equals uh, atmospheric pressure. So they appear on opposite sides of the equation. We can cancel them out. If this was a sealed tank and we knew the pressure uh, at the top of the tank in this space up here, and of course that's what we would enter for P1. So we can hand, it's very easy to ha handle sealed tanks as well. But in this case, the tank is open, so the pressure at one and the pressure at two are the same. We can cancel them. So in the next slide, I think I've rewritten this with those two terms eliminated. So now we just have the, the, the kinetic energy per unit mass plus the potential energy per unit mass at one equals the kinetic energy at two per unit mass plus the kinetic energy uh, plus the potential energy at two per unit mass. Now you're told in the problem that the diameter of the tank is large. So this diameter here is large. And the reason you're told that is so that you can come to the conclusion that the level of the tank drops very slowly. So the velocity here, uh, V1, is going to be small. If you were told the diameter of the tank, you could actually calculate the uh, velocity at one. 
But since you're not given it and you're told it's large, we're going to make the assumption that the velocity at 1 is 0. So we can neglect the kinetic energy at point 1. That's a reasonable assumption. Now notice here, I'm measuring the elevation z from the bottom of the tank. You can pick any convenient datum or reference line that you want. So when we, if we pick the bottom of the tank as the datum, we have z1 equals 5.2 meters, the height of the tank, and z2, the discharge point, is 1.3 meters. And so now we've got, we've got z one and Z2, we can solve, we can solve for V2. And that's what I've done here. I've solved for V2. It equals 2G Z1 minus Z2. And I've made the substitution, 2 times 9.81, and the difference in the elevation, 5.2 minus 1.3 meters. And you can see the units balance. We have meters squared per second squared. Square rooted gives you 8.75 meters per second. You may notice that this velocity equals, you know, 2g delta h is the same as for a free-falling object. In your physics course, in your dynamics course, you've probably done these kinds of calculations. And so this is the fluid dynamics equivalent of a, of a falling object. The, all of the potential energy at 1 has been converted to kinetic energy at 2. Remember, we have no losses, so it's just like a falling object. There's no viscous losses in uh, Bernoulli's equation. So now we have the velocity at 2. We just got to multiply the velocity at 2 times the area at 2, pi d2 squared upon 4. The inside diameter of that pipe is 2.5 centimeters, so pi times 0.025 meters squared. Of course, we're making the assumption here of one-dimensional flow. And that gives 0 0.00429 cubic meters per second. And then I've used the fact that there's a thousand liters in a cubic meter to convert that to 4.29 liters per second. So that's a fairly low discharge rate for a large tank. It's reasonable that the that the surface level here would fall slowly. If you were given the diameter of the tank, you could correct for that effect, but you're not in this case. So I'm just going to end by asking, will the actual flow, if you were to set up a tank with water with exactly these dimensions and a large tank, uh, will the actual flow be higher or lower? And why? You might want to pause the video and just think about this for a moment. The answer, of course, is that in all likelihood, you'd get a slightly lower flow. The reason is you've neglected viscosity. Water has some viscosity. It's fairly low, but it has some viscosity. You actually have, uh, you know, a velocity profile across here, and it's it sticks at the surface. So there's some drag. This pipe would exert some drag on the flow because of the no-slip condition. So uh, you're going to get a slightly lower uh, velocity. Also, there'd be some these sharp edges here. And we'll learn about that. Uh, later on, these sharp edge inlets cause some turbulence and that burns up some energy because of mixing, you know, it dissipates some energy. And so uh, Bernoulli's equation assumes there's no energy loss from 1 to 2, but in reality there is some energy loss uh, due to fluid friction. And so you'd probably get a value just slightly lower than this, but nevertheless it's a very good engineering uh, approximation for most flows. Now this is a very simple example. I'm going to do some more complicated examples in subsequent videos.